Okay, so I'm going to use this tutorial to show you how to create an image, um, taking inspiration here from this um, image by um, a photographer called um, Dana Tripp, or D um, maybe Dana Tripp, depending on how you pronounce it. Um, but um, this is the main image that we're looking at. You can see it's very sort of like warm in tone, and um, you can see that we're going to be playing around with um, a few different layers, repeating some layers, and um, playing around with some opacity as well. So... Um, in Photoshop, what I've done is I've downloaded um, this stock image from Pixels. Um, so I'm going to use this. The reason I've chosen this image is because it's quite neutral in terms of colour. So later on when I try to add some of these um, yellows and oranges in, it's going to be fairly easy for me to do that. Whereas if I'd chosen obviously a, a portrait that had lots of colour in, I'd have to put the replacement and things like that instead. So, um, the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a couple of um, copies of this layer. So I'm going to press Command J on the um, keyboard or Control J if you're on a laptop. Um, you can also um, right click and select duplicate layer that way. Or you could even come up to layer up here and select duplicate layer there. But Command J is the um, keyboard shortcut. So, um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to hide that very top layer. I'm going to make sure I'm active on this middle layer here. Um, and I'm going to reduce the opacity to about 60-ish. Now at the moment, you can't really see any sort of visible difference at the moment because the both layers are um, exactly on top of one another. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to press Command T, or it would be Control T on a, um, on a PC or a laptop, um, and that is the shortcut for free transform, which you can also find under Edit here. Okay, um, you can see now that the image is selected around the edges. We've got these little squares in the corners and along the edges. And what I can do is, if I hover over one of the um, one of the middle um, squares and click and turn it, you can see now that I can start to see the image underneath. And that's because I've reduced that opacity down. If it was 100%, I wouldn't really be able to see much what was going on under, um, underneath. So I've angled it slightly. Um, I'm going to press um, enter on the keyboard to set the image down and then I'm going to make the top layer visible so of course now we can't see the layers underneath because it's 100% um, opacity so I'm going to reduce that one down to about 60-ish as well and then I'm going to do the same thing again command T and I'm going to twist the image like so I'm also going to drop the opacity down a little bit further um, so I can see the layers underneath a bit more clearly. Just make sure that I've sort of staggered that um, um, figure slightly. I'll go for about there, I think. And then I'm going to press um, enter on the keyboard and set down the image, like so. Okay, so at the moment it's still like a very confusing image to look at because um, in the Dana Trip image, um, we've got the face of this lady um, appearing as one face, but then she's got um, her, her body underneath has been repeated a few times. Um, and um, it's almost been sort of like shifted over. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to use a layer mask to um, hide a couple of this model's faces. So there's only sort of one face, but then a repeated, um, uh, a repeated version of her body then. So... To do a layer mask, you come down here and you click this button, and then you can see there's um, a white box now being attached to this layer. What we are effectively going to do um, is paint a hole in um, this um, top layer um, so that we can see the um, faces in the bottom two layers. So I'm going to come up here and select the brush. Um, it's a little bit on the large size. So I'm going to drop it down to about... There, that'll do. Um, I'm going to use a soft edge brush so rather than a hard edge one, um, just so that perhaps the effect is a little bit more subtle. Um, and I'm going to make sure that I've got black selected down here. Okay. Um, I think that's right on the threshold. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. So what I will do, I'm going to click down and move my um, cursor over this lady's face now and. What I'm doing is I'm taking away the face on the very top layer, like so. And then you can see down here, I've, where I've painted, look, you can see like a little black um, hole has appeared in this white box. Um, that's basically showing you where, um, where, I, where I've painted, so I can see um, 
where there's a hole in that in that veil, so to speak. Okay, I'm going to do the same now on the next layer. So again, making sure I've got the flax selected, and I'm going to paint again. And you can see now that the face that's on the bottom layer is the one that we are now seeing because the first two faces now have been obscured by the black painting that I have done on there. Now, layer mask is quite a good way um, to um, do something like this because it's a less destructive way of um, altering the images rather than um, you know cutting things out and, and things like that. Because if I did make a mistake, for example, all I would need to do is switch to white. And if I paint back in white, you can see you know I'm almost like fixing the hole um, and the image is reappearing again. Obviously, we don't want that for, that, for this um, option, so I'm just going to go back to showing that lady's face like that. There we go. So I'm quite happy with that so far because we've got the, um, it looks like we've got the lady's one head, but then her um, uh, body is in movement, very similar to this Donna trip effect as well. Um, so now, um, I'm now going to start to put in um, some, um, some colour um, adjustments. Now, let me see, I may... I think I may do a photo filter um, and in order to do that I think I may have to um, merge these layers together so what I'm going to do I'm going to merge all visible and that's basically going to make all the layers into one into one layer here now so you would only do this step once you are completely happy with the positioning of the body um, that you're you're happy with like the mask layer and the, and the um the the repeat repeated shapes underneath the body and so on. So once you're completely happy with that, then merge them because of course um we may not be able to um get those layers back later. After that, um you can come up here to apply a photo filter, and there are some presets here that you can use. So let's go for quite a yellow one to begin with because we want um to create this warm you know yellow and orange effect and so on. Um, what's this deep yellow down here? Oh, that's a bit warmer. Let's use that one. Um, yeah, we'll go for about 75%. Um, and press OK on that. What I'm then going to do is um, duplicate the layer. So press Command J on the keyboard. And I'm now going to put another photo filter on this layer. This time I'm going to do maybe an orange or possibly a red. The orange works quite well, I think. Very similar to that sort of Donna trip um, effect over here. I'm going to press OK on that. Yeah, those colours are looking quite similar so far. OK. Um, now what I might do is try to create this sort of vignette effect that she's got. So where she's got some of the um, shadows appearing in the corners of um, this image. Um, I might try and create that similar effect by, again, putting a mask on. This time I'm going to raise the size of the brush a little bit. Um, keep it on a soft edge brush and then paint through a little bit. So I'm just going to take off some of that um, orange, here, um, orange here and there and allow some of the um, yellow to show through. Um, you know, if I decide that, you know, Perhaps I take away too much orange, I can paint it back in by selecting the white instead. I'll leave it like that for now. Um, the other thing I can then do is put um, a vignette on um, to get these darker shades in the corners. Um, so again, I'm going to merge them, the layers together. Um, I'm going to use the ellipsis select tool up here and I'm going to draw a fairly big ellipsis like that. And I'm positioning it so that eventually when I put um, some tone on here, it's only going to affect these areas up here. So that's why I'm positioning it so that the ellipsis is coming off the edge of the um, image. I'm going to press select and inverse, which means it's these areas that are selected now and not the ellipsis in the middle. And I want to modify the edge so that it's feathered. Um, 150 pixels. That should be OK. I'm going to press OK on that. Um, now, if I click here, it's going to add in a curves layer, and because I've already got that um, ellipsis selected now, 
it's only going to affect those areas. So I'm going to hold on to the um, diagonal line here and I'm just going to pull it down slightly. You can see it's starting to darken in the corners. Obviously if I went you know, all the way down there it'd be quite extreme. If I went in the opposite way it would lighten it. Okay, But we want to darken it slightly. So I'm going to take it to about, I don't want to be too obvious, but I'm going to take it to about there. Um, that's the curves layer sorted. Now, the other thing I'd like to do is looking at this image, some of these um, shadows are quite greeny in colour here and there. So I'm going to try to replace some of these shadowy colours here um, and see what happens if I make them quite green. So I'm going to come up to adjustments and I'm going to come down to replace colour. Now, what I'm going to do, if I hover over the image, you can see that the cursor has changed to this eyedropper tool. So I'm going to select the colour that I want to replace. So I'm going to select um, I'm going to select this sort of shadowy area down here, I think. Um, and then down here, I'm going to click on this box. And this is going to help me choose the colour I would like. Um, a very yellowy sort of green, maybe. Um, I don't want it. Oh, no, I'm not happy with that because it's affecting quite a lot of your clothing, which I don't want. So I'm going to cancel that. I'm going to come over here and select a different area of colour and try that one instead. And let's try that again. Let's choose a green again. That's a bit better. That's not going to be quite so um, quite so obvious. I'm going to. I don't want to choose a very strong green. I want to choose a green that's quite subtle, really. So I'm going to go with that one. And then down here, I can also play around with the saturation a little bit, so I could like you know bring it up really high, drop it down low, and so on. Um, but there maybe, and again, this will be the lightness and the darkness that I can adjust. Just going to saturate a little bit, and a little bit more green in there. That will do. So I'm going to press OK. So you can see some of the green shadows are coming through a little bit on here now as well. Um, I still think I could bring it through a little bit more um, orange, I think, on some of this. So I'm going to um, I'm just going to play around a little bit with um, the channel mixer. Let's see what happens here. So I'm going to pull up the red slightly. It's a little bit warmer. And um, I don't know what happens if I put another photo filter on. Let's try another one on the top. Um, the reason I've selected the red is because it is opposite on the colour wheel to the green. So I'm hoping they won't make the green too obvious. So by, by putting a slight bit of red over the top, it'll um, neutralise a little bit of that green that's come through in the shadows. Possibly a bit more yellow, actually. Let's have a look at that. Let's try and put another bit of yellow. I'm going to go with that. Um, now, what I'm not too happy with is, um, obviously in this image, they've got this um, uh, ball under this arm and on here as well. It's almost like a bit of a source of light within this image. Um, whereas in this image now, it's looking quite flat in comparison because there's no real bright whites coming through, apart from in this lady's hair here. So I'm going to use the dodge and burn tool to try to enhance that a little bit. So I'm going to um, make sure I've got the dodge tool selected here. So I'm just going to zoom in slightly so I can see her um, hair and face a little bit easier. Now, I pressed command and the plus sign on the keyboard for that, but you can also um, do control and plus if you're on a laptop. Now then, um, I'm going to bring down the size of the brush slightly. Um, I'm going to keep it as a soft edge um, brush. Now, over here, I can choose whether or not to affect the highlights, midtones, or shadows. So I'm going to affect the highlights because I want to make the highlights brighter. 
and then here I've got um, exposure level. Now I'll show you what happens if I choose quite a high exposure and you'll see that it comes out quite um, um, harshly. Can you see how it's affecting that now? And bring that out really, really brightly. So I'm just going to step back slightly. And I'm just going to bring down the um, effect to about, you could try maybe 20. Well, that's still a bit higher than what I would normally what I would normally use. I am going to bring up the brush size a little bit. That's much better. Um, now, I'm going to just go over the um, edges of the hair um, a few times. Just to try to enhance the um, very white highlights there. I'm also going to select mid-tones and I'm going to do the same thing again so that it also brings up some of the mid-tones in the hay this time and not just the very, very white highlights. You can see now that that's becoming really, really quite white and quite bright. I'm just going to zoom out to see if it's how that's looking from a distance and if it's looking a little bit... Um, like Dharma Trips tonal range, so yes, that's a lot brighter now, and it is bringing a little bit of sense of um, that bright white into the image. Um, I don't think it's something I'd particularly aim for, unless if you know, I wouldn't be doing this to an image of my own, but because obviously we're trying to get that Dharma Trip effect, then I think we're okay. I'm going to add a little bit onto the um, arms as well. just from little points of um, reference. Oh, I didn't like that last one. Let's just go back a little bit. Which I think. I think that might be a bit too bright. I mean, we could bring it down a lot and then try and add a bit more subtle. There we go. So there we go. Um, so that's probably as close as I'm going to get this image to looking like Dharma Trip. Um, don't think we've done too badly um, so there we go, so have a go with that and see how you get on with your own images